Andreas, I'm going to go ahead and record the session. Would you like to start since we uh, approached yeah, 10 o'clock? Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Andreas Anker, and I'm um, Partner Manager at Claudiax. We are happy to welcome you to our webinar together with Mike from Third Wave. Um, we will start with a few words about Claudiax. After that, uh, Mike will take over to show you um, the third wave RMA solution, which is already um, available on Claudiax. So, um, what is Claudiax? Claudiax is a full managed cloud platform for SAP Business One on SQL and HANA systems. Um, what are the key features? First of all, the price. Um, it's 50 US dollar or euro per user per month. There are no setup costs. Um, you can have it from one user. Um, we deliver both um, access possibilities, that means remote desktop connection and the web browser client. All updates and upgrades are included. Uh, and Claudiax um, and Claudiax manages all the security things and backups for your system. SQL and HANA um, is on the same price, so there's no difference. Um, SAP Business One add-ons are available. The standard add-ons from SAP and also um, from other SAP partners like ThirdWave, um, the solutions are ready to run. So if you need the SAP Business One in standard with, for example, the RMR add-on, we can deliver. We can deliver that. Um, that means you can run it on Claudiax if it runs on-premise. Um, so every combination of SAP Business One with add-ons, uh, which is running today on an in-house installation, can also run on Claudiax. Um, we have three types of customers on Claudiax. Um, first of all, customers um, who swap from, from an on-premise installation to cloud. That means they are using um, still the on-premise licenses. Um, the second one is, so to speak, hybrid cloud. Um, that means the customers are buying the licenses from SAP Business from Business One and running it only on Cloudiax. And the pure cloud customers, that means um, you rent the SAP Business One cloud license um, in a standard way. So what is in for customers? Um, there is no big or upfront investment needed, um, enterprise class IT landscape, that means um, you get an enterprise IT uh, without to have any know-how about it or something else. The whole solution is scalable and flexible. You can work with the solution anytime at any place with any device you want. Um, you can easily extend it with other add-ons, so if your business model change or you need more functionality. The whole system is always up to date and secure. You have a clear cost structure. Um, and Claudiax is also not a specialist, um, not only a specialist in cloud infrastructure, also in business one, HANA, add-on developing and de deployment of the systems. Our focus is 100% on SAP Business One and the cloud solution. Last but not least, from my side, a short overview um, about our Claudiax community partners. For example, Third Wave again. So, and that's a good point to turn over to Mike, um, that he can show the RMR solution, which is already available on Claudiax. Sure. Well, thank you, uh, Andreas. <clears throat> uh, and thank you, Claudiax, for uh, setting up this uh, webinar. I um, let me see here. I'm going to go ahead and screen the monitor. Change my screen here to two. Okay. Can everybody, can you see my screen? Yeah. I can okay, see great. So, oh, sorry, here we go. Um, so third wave, um, you know, just to give you a little bit of background of our company, you know, we've been around um, serving uh, clients for two decades, uh, small, medium-sized businesses that are uh, in this space. 
We've actually been uh, SAP partners since 2003. Um, and generally, by developing you know, all of our add-ons like the RMA, shipping, credit card, and many others, um, we've actually been recognized and received awards from SAP for our ability to continually help uh, a lot of businesses um, you know, find solutions that automate and help them grow their business by adding some of these tools. The RMA add-on itself, um, you know, the general purpose of it is to help track and um, monitor how many authorizations were issued for returns that customers are intending to uh, send back. Um, so normally in SAP, if you were to record the return, the inventory transaction happens right away. This allows for sort of a holding pattern so that the inventory can, you know, you can know how many items, how many customers are returning some items, and then you can, um, you know, keep track of that as far as when are they going to come in and, you know, are they going to return all or partial of an order. Um, it also tracks uh, the receipt of when they return the items. Um, and when you receive it in, there's an inspection routine. So this is where you could determine whether the product is resellable, put it back in the warehouse for resale, or if it needs some refurbishing, if you need to actually create a service call to refurbish it and either send it back to the consumer or refurbish it and put it back available for sale, or if you inspect it and deem that you know maybe it's a manufacturer defect. Um, so you could, there's a number of different ways you could track why the returns are happening, uh, what you're going to do with the inventory once it is returned, and where you're going to put it uh, from warehouse to warehouse, whether it's resellable or it needs to be returned to, mer to uh, the supplier um, or what have you. Um, and all of the features, it's all embedded into SAP Business One. Um, you know, you don't have to use a third-party system for it. So with that, um, I will go ahead and show you the actual add-on. So as you can see, it is embedded into the um, SAP screens, so you don't have to exit the system to uh, you know, create this RMA. Um, business partner code you know, can be entered in. It has expiration dates, so if, if in cases where you would only refund, you know, if the merchant only wants to refund people, if they ha but they have to return it within 30 days, you can put an expiration date on it. Um, it gives it its own you know, within our user defined tables that we've created, it gives its own unique ID. So you can tell the customer, sure, send it back. You have until September 16th, but you have to put, uh, you know, a big number, RMA number 47 on the box as you return it. Um, so before I show you the actual RMA, I just wanted to briefly show you um, the web and uh, mobile interface that we have for this uh, add-on as well. We have another product that would enable either the merchant to have a web presence to enter that return request, um, or it could end up being a customer-facing um, you know, tool. So the customer could actually, you could provide this as a, a web portal on, on the website. The consumer could go in and request a return for a product. Um, so obviously, if it was a customer-facing form, we can hide things like the approval status so that we can, if a consumer entered it, it could always be pending until the merchant went in and authorized that return to go through. <clears throat> um, and obviously some of the dates, um, you know, they would only see expiration date as, as far as being 30 days away from when they're physically entering that in. Um, and down below, obviously, they could enter in the items that they're returning, quantity. So if they order three of an item, they could just return one of them. They could put their own reason in there just so that the merchant had a heads up as to why they're returning that product and you know when they can expect it. Um, so if I could flip back to our SAP screen here. Um, what I'll do, let me show you really quick. We have a configuration window here. So under our administration, we can go into our RMA setup. And for the return request, there's a number of default options that you can set up. So when a return happens or when you receive a product, you can put it into a new warehouse called returns so that you could separate the inventory until you've made a decision whether it's resellable or if it has to go back to manufacturer um, or what have you. Um, the 30-day window could be changed here. So if you tell people you have two weeks to send it back to us, you could change the expiration date you know, to 15 days um, or make it 60 or 90, whatever um, whatever the merchant would want to do here. Um, 
The default reason codes is just an effort to save you some clicks when you're creating the return request. So if you assume that every return that comes in is because the customer is claiming it's a defect, um, you could put this in and it would, be, it would automatically pop that up in there. Now I have you know, a bunch of different reason codes for returns. Um, this is all free form. So you'd be able to enter in, you know, the merchant could enter in as many, pro as many return codes as they like um, in here. And you'll see how we can utilize that later to narrow down why the returns are happening or if there are any patterns. Um, disposition is just that, you know, even if the customer claims it's defective, you always want to inspect it. So you want to have this layer of when it comes in, put it in a queue for someone in the warehouse to inspect and see whether or not the customer is telling the truth. <laughs> Did they break the item? Did they, if they say there's a missing component, you know, is it because they broke it or is it because it actually wasn't, you know, in the box? Um, one of the other options we have is after you've inspected it and you make a determination that it's okay and you want to resell it to other consumers because it was not touched, you could automatically transfer it to the past warehouse, which is passing inspection, and this makes it available for sale right away. And it creates the inventory transaction and transfer at that point when you inspect it and put it back into inventory. Or if it fails inspection because it is damaged and you can't sell it again, you can designate the failed or disposal warehouse here, as, as I called it. And this transfers the inventory into a holding pattern where you can then write off that inventory and get rid of it. Um, if by chance you have products, um, say they're large machineries or, or things that need uh, a refurbishing, so to speak, you could put them into a, a service hold warehouse where you can create a service ticket to perform some maintenance on the product and m make it available for sale at a later time. Um, you know, when you create that service ticket, this is all the default um, flags that would appear in there. So you can know that it was generated from an RMA. Uh, in some cases, you may want to refurbish it and send it back to the customer that ordered it uh, because you're repairing some of the parts that are in there. Um, or you could just be refurbishing it and de de determining whether you could put it back in to sell to somebody else. Uh, but this just gives you a way to create that service ticket off of the return and make a decision at that point what you'd like to do with it there. So if I close out of here, I'm going to go ahead and go into an RMA. Let's create one really quick, and I'll show you how this uh, how this would work. So I create the I add the business partner. Um, now the expiration date goes 30 days out, so you can tell the customer, hey, I'm going to create this return for you. It'll expire on September 16th, but they may tell you, listen, I need my money back. I'm sending it to you, and you'll get it next week. So you could put a due date. Um, in this case, I'm going to put next Friday, the 26th, so that for my reporting purposes, I can look at due dates and know how much inventory would be we be receiving on any given day based on a customer's estimation. Um, so you can always filter reports based on the expiration date, but you may also want to take a look at the due date just to know what kind of traffic the warehouse is going to get. Um, my default uh, return reason was defect, but maybe in this case they told me that there was a missing uh, part. So I'm going to go ahead and put missing, but I'm still going to put the disposition that I want to inspect it um, to determine what I want to do, whether I would refund them or not. So when I go and add the item, I'll go in and add one of these printers, but they're going to return two of them. So let's say they ordered two. I'm going to put another item in here as well. And one of these. So this one the, is the memory. I'm going to say that it was defective. Couldn't really have a missing part in a memory chip. But the printers, they're saying that there was a missing, missing part. So we'll have two of those that we're going to inspect. Um, and this one we're going to inspect as well, but it's uh, because it's defective. So we're going to test it and make sure you know they're telling uh, telling us what it really is. So I'll go ahead and add this RMA, and we'll assume we're in the future. The customer actually returned the product. I'll go back into that RMA once the product comes in. I can look up. They put number forty-seven on the box, so we can open it up. We can look and we see. Okay, we have two of these and one of these. I'm now, at this point, this is where you would copy it to the return, 
and the the opportunity to um, you know show that you've received the items, and then now you're going to be able to do an inspection afterwards. So I'm going to confirm that I have this printer. I have two of those. This is the memory chip, and I have one of those. So let's go ahead and add this return and confirm that those came in. Won't be able to make any changes. We'll hit yes. Okay, so I'll close out of the return window. We'll refresh our RMA. And you'll see now the status of it is closed. So the RMA, from a purpose of knowing that you've issued them an authorization to return the product, you've received it in, now the return request has been closed. And if you look, we have a results tab. So we can always go in here and get a snapshot of what happened. So if it was still open, um, it would show that they were intended to return two printers. They intended to return one memory card. Since I did the return, um, it shows that we've received two of them, uh, two of this and one of those, and that we need to now inspect them. Um, and later you'll see if once I make a, de a determination what to do, it'll tell you whether they passed or failed or a service ticket was created. So uh, if, you were look if you were doing these on an individual one-by-one -one basis, you could do an RMA inspection right from the RMA here. And you'll see that they're going to appear here. But what I want to show you real quick is normally you would enter in the returns and you would close out of those windows. So what I'll do at a later time, I go into inventory. RMA inspection, and I could search for that RMA number, or I could just hit OK and see all the available returns that are in there. And here is RMA number 47, the one I just did. So you can see there's two of these and one of those. So on the printers, I'm going to go ahead and say one of them was perfect. It passed inspection. Um, you know, I can refund them some money. The other one, I'm going to say, no, it failed inspection. And I can give it some reason codes why. So I can say that it was damaged. Um, you know, we can put in another code saying customer, you know, broke the product. You know, we can add one in here on the fly and track it to track it that way. Um, or you might, you know, might have to say a manufacturer defect. Um, and then you'd be able to notify the manufacturer that there was an issue. So one of them passed, one of them failed. Um, and here, actually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pass this one just yet. I'm going to make this one a zero. I'm going to pass the memory card and give that one um, the money back. But what I'm going to do is for the printer, we had two to inspect. I'm going to say one of them failed. It was damaged. The other one was semi-okay, but I'm going to create a service ticket off of it. So for this one, I want to tell the service guys to repair and um, inspect, repair, and return. So there's obviously different decisions you can make off of that service ticket, you know, send to research and development. These are, again, codes that I created in my test system, but a number of different uh, codes could be created here as far as giving the service technician an idea of what you want them to do with it. Um, so repair, return it to stock, repair, return to vendor, um, if you can't repair it in-house. But I'm going to say inspect it, repair, and return to the consumer. So there's the code. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I select these two so it knows which ones to take action on based on my decisions here. Now when I add that inspection posting, it says execute inventory transfer. So if you remember in the configuration, it said if you pass it, send it to the sellable warehouse. If you fail it, put it into the damaged warehouse. And if it's service call, it would put it into the service warehouse. So it's going to actually transfer the inventory at this point because you're inspecting the items, you're handling it, and you're telling it what to do with it at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And it brings up the inventory transfer window with three different transactions now. Um, so you could see one of them is going to the disposal because it failed inspection, it's damaged. I can't resell it. Um, the other one is going to the service warehouse, like I said, and then the memory chip was fine. Um, I'm going to be able to resell that, so I'm putting it into my standard warehouse ID. And remarks, um, just from a tracking standpoint, anything you do does give you some um, link back to the original information. So when you do the inventory transfer, you'll know that these single-digit transfers were from an RMA, and it tells you which RMA number they were, so they could always be researched and uh, looked back at. Go ahead and add that in. 
And then that inventory transfer has happened. I'm going to go ahead and look at the RMA and just refresh the screen. And now you'll be able to see we did receive two. We did receive one from what they requested. And now you can see that the memory chip passed inspections going back into available for selling. And here's the two items for the printer, one of them which failed inspection and the other one as a service, it was a service ticket was created. So from a customer service standpoint, the merchants would be able to go in and have their customer service reps or managers um, review this information. And if from a snapshot, if a customer called in and says, hey, I returned a product, what's going on? Um, you know, they can quickly go into the RMA and determine that, well, one of them did pass, so you are going to get your money back for this one. Um, you damaged one of the others, and that's failed inspection, so we can't refund you there. Um, but one of the others, we're doing a service call on it to repair it and uh, send it back to you. Um, so from a customer service standpoint, it's nice to get a quick snapshot and pull up an RMA and know exactly what's happening with that. Let's see. Um, so one of the other things, just from a tracking standpoint, I'll show you, is we have a number of queries that are set up to let you track what's happening. Um, as I mentioned before, the RMAs can expire if that's what the merchant determines they want to do. So they can go in and look in here in this query just to know which outstanding um, RMAs are open um, but had expired. So here's a few that I had created in the, in the recent months. Um, customer requested to return a product, but they never did. So it's something to keep track of. Uh, maybe they changed their mind, you know, that they didn't want it and they kept it. Um, or if it passed the, the expiration date and you returned it back to them, you can always keep notes um, that you did that. But um, the reason, their intent to return and the reason that they're trying to return the product is always something you'd be able to track in there. And just to know how many um, older ones are in there. Now, just by chance, if you um, did give somebody a request to return a product and they never returned it, see this one for myself expired in July, I can go ahead and say this document number 26, you know what, I want to uh, give them a break um, and I'm going to let them return it anyway. You, there's always the opportunity to go in to the RMA and we'll pull up number 26. Let's see. Oh, this is creating a new one. Sorry about that. We're going to go into lookup mode. So this one, you can see it expired. It is still open. It's not letting me do anything since it was expired. But if you give the customer a second chance, you can go in there and modify uh, any of them and change the expiration date. I'll change it to the end of September. So now when I update it, this RMA now has the ability to create the return. So these buttons did not appear before because it was expired. So you couldn't actually receive the product and return it. And then, you know, after it's returned to the inspection. So that's just an option in there uh, for you to view. And obviously in that query, in the query window, there was also some other tracking tools that you'd be able to use um, just to determine trends and find out why these returns are happening. Is it based off of, you know, are there certain customers that are returning more than others, certain business partners returning more than others? Is there certain items that are causing some issues? Is there a salesperson that's selling, you know, certain things that are causing, you know, triggering more returns than not? Um, so by determining, by looking through a lot of these items, you'd be able to get the business intelligence you need to um, change some of the operations and figure out where the, where the leak is for, you know, and where you can reduce your returns. Um, if I, so that is when you go ahead and, um, you know, create the RMA, um, on the fly, right from that screen. Um, a couple other ways you can create the RMA, I'll just show you really quick, is if you're in a service call, say somebody calls up and they ask to, um, you know, get service on a product. So you're speaking to them, you're entering the service call, you create some activities, um, you know, you're picking up the equipment and trying to make a repair. If you can't fix it and the service call, you can create the RMA right from the service call here. So then you can just um, let the warehouse know, okay, we're tried to work on it, but you know, customer needs to return this. So you can give them the authorization and you can link that RMA to um, the service call here. Uh, one of the other features we have is in the sales order. Um, there is this copy to feature. Um, now I can't, oops, yeah. Maximization here. 
Um, sorry about the resolution issue there. But I have you, you have the copy to function, so where you can copy a sales order to a delivery or invoice. Now, my version, I'm actually, uh, I apologize because I'm using the, a 9.0 version. But on 9.1, we have a copy to RMA. Um, so when you're in the sales order, you'd be able to copy it right to an RMA. All of the line items, the quantities, all of that copies over and brings you brings open the RMA maintenance screen. And then from there, you could either reduce the quantities or reduce some of the items off of the RMA. So if they had, you know, here they purchased four different items. If this were, if you were to create an RMA, you could re reduce it down and just have them return one or two of those different printers, whatever they decided to, to return to you. But at least it copies everything over. So you have the business partner information, the address, you know, the items that they ordered, the amount, you know, quantities, and it gives you a little bit of a save a couple clicks on the, um, on the steps there. So only other quick points is, um, you know, all of this could be on a user, user rights basis. So you can have just certain users access um, RMA f features itself. Um, and let's see, I believe, I believe that's all I have. Um, so one of the other closing remarks is just um, if you guys have any questions, um, let me pull up my PowerPoint for you. If there are any questions, what I'll say is please give a uh, call or email um, to either myself from Third Wave for the RMA um, or Amen, who, um, you know, is, is, would it be able to help you from uh, Variatech or Cloudyx as a company? Um, this is his direct number. That's my direct number. Um, and that's my email as well. So give us a call. Uh, shoot us an email. Um, I also have recorded this webinar. So I can email that to any of you. And, um, you know, you can share that with your teams if there's any questions. Um, definitely reach out. But I do thank everybody for attending. Hope you all have a great day, and thanks again.